Hi, I'm Simon Orles from Frame Technologies. We're going to talk about timber frame systems. Um, frame Technologies is a bespoke timber frame company with engineered timber systems manufacturing timber frame for the self-build market throughout the UK. In front of me now today we have three different systems showing the different uh, products that we can actually use. On my left we have the uh, TechVantage E system which is a fully insulated system taking you from U values from building regs down to ultra low uh, zero heating. All the systems today are going to deliver a very, very low U values, and they're all what we call what we refer to as closed panel timber systems. Um, you don't want to be building in anything else these days. And the beauty with a timber system is it gives you a complete build system, which we'll touch on later. So as you can see on the TechVantage E system, starting from the outside in, we have the breather membrane on the outside. We then have which is factory fitted and uh, stapled on. That is two different systems. We have a foil system or we have a red system. The foil system is when we've got masonry cladding on the outside. The red is when we're using lightweight cladding render systems. So those are the two and they do affect your U values. Um, if we've got a masonry on the outside with the foil, that will improve the thermal value of the panel by at least 10%. So then inside the panel, once you've got your sheathing board on the outside and your 140 studs, we've then got uh, factory fitted uh, polyurethane in the panel. And you'll see we've actually got air spaces in now when we're trying to build an energy efficient house um, and an airtight house, we're actually fitting air spaces in because that air space is actually very good from thermal efficient point of view. So we've got a 140 stud with 100 mil of polyurethane fitted in the panel airspace either side then we've got a liner board on the inside so that liner board then is actually bridging over the studs so we're reducing our cold bridging through that liner board could be anything from 20 mil up to 100 millimeters depending again on the u value so that element of the panel doesn't change it's the liner on the inside that actually as we get thicker that gets you a lower u value lower u value means less bills on your heating costs once that liner goes on the inside, you then have the service battens going on. The service battens then pinch the liner to the, uh, to the wall panel with the tape joints, and then all your services drop in that zone. So all your services are on the room side, on the warm side of your insulation. So you're not then penetrating your air tightness layer or your thermal envelope. So that's your TechVantage E system. Then we go across then to the uh, other two then, which is our TechVantage S. TechVantage S is very similar to the TechVantage E, but TechVantage S is a breathable wall system. And every time everybody says, well, how can I have a breathable wall that's airtight? You'll see the difference with it now, whereas obviously cavity side is where the breather membrane is. Um, with this system, we've got a wood fiber board on the outside, and the OSB that was on the outside of TechVantage E is on the inside because that OSB layer is actually our racking layer and is actually giving the building stability. So then in between that then, once you, with your wood fibre on the outside, which is actually keep generating the studs to keep warm and insulating the studs, we've then got an in, a, a, a glass wood insulation in the stud. That insulation in the stud can be, with TechVantage S and T system, can be any kind of natural breathable insulation. So it can be glass wool, it can be rock wool, it could be uh, wood fibre, it could be waste paper with warm cell, or it even could be sheep's wool. And the idea is then that your uh, air then can breathe through the breather paper, through the wood fibre, through the insulation and back out and stops at that sheathing layer on the inside face, which is where it becomes then airtight. And then from that point on, we have the service battens again. And then obviously we can either take the joints in the panel or we can turn around and have a foil on there. Uh, or we can add a polyurethane if, we, if needed be, getting down to ultra low U value. So that's our TechVantage E and our TechVantage S system. Then we go across to our TechVantage T, which seems to be the big brother of all the systems, really. TechVantage T is very similar to TechVantage S, um, and that, but that, ironically, the U values on that, actually, the poorest that system delivers is 0.13, and that's actually getting down to sort of 0.09, then 0.09, 0.08. 
The big difference with uh, t the, t the uh, T system is T stands for twin stud. So it's a separated stud. So you've got 90 mil studs on the outside, the same as the Tech S in behind the wood fiber. Then we've got a cavity and then we've got a 90 mil inside. Those studs aren't connected throughout the stories. So the idea being then you've got very, very good reduced thermal bridging um, because obviously the studs aren't connected. So that's why we're actually getting very, very good, very, very good thermal performance. And obviously, if you're building down towards passive house, that makes a big difference with having the uh, reduced cold bridging and the, the uh, reduced timber fraction in the panels. Because the timber fraction in these panels, you're running at about 13%, whereas on the TechVantage T, we're down to about 6.5%, which is absolutely phenomenal. All three systems I'll touch on a bit now about claddings. We can, you can clad timber frame in absolutely anything. So we'll turn around and actually now revert back to the model behind to show us how timber frame actually goes together. People always say, what foundations can I build the timber frame on? You can build timber frame on any foundations. But the big thing with timber frame is it's an engineered timber solution. And by being engineered, it's no good just putting the found same foundations in as you did on the last project. Let the timber frame company turn around and produce the line and point load information to turn around and actually so that you know what the setting out information is and what the loadings onto those foundations are. Once the structural slab is in, we've then got a, uh, an upstand on the outside because we don't have timber below DPC level. Nominally, that upstand is 225, which is one block high. That can be higher if you want to turn around and go to 300, but obviously it wants to go in increments of brick sizes. Then on the inside of that, you've got the um, insulation and then obviously underfloor heating and then a screed uh, finish to get you up to uh, finished floor level, which to be honest, seems to be the stat majority of the, uh, the builds now, the insulation and screed is going in after the timber frame is then erected. So then you'll see that the, on top of the upstands we have a, a timber plate, which is what we call a sole plate, which is out of uh, treated material. That's cut in the factory, all the, all the ends are treated, and they're all treated with a coloured dye as well, so that you know they're actually, it's been treated. So that's actually fitted on a DPC, mechanically fixed down to the uh, block upstand. Then on top of that, once it's mechanically fixed down, we then sort of put our external wall panels. So as we were talking earlier about the Tech Vantage E system, now on my right, the pre-fitted insulation in the panels, there's no way you can fit the insulation on site like you can in the factory. And as you can see in there, on the clips, nice and tight, no gaps around the outsides, uh, even around the windows and uh, the whole thing done in the factory. So that's Tech Vantage E. Then on the side of us, we've got Tech Vantage S, as we were showing earlier, which has got our um, breathable wall insulation in and our foil. And that one's actually got the service battens pre-fitted on it. Then our internal panels, uh, whether they be non-load bearing or load bearing, as we were saying earlier, they're all made in the factory. Some load bearing panels will be sheathed, um, but all panels come up off the same level and all interlock. So, as we were saying earlier, it's a complete build system. So you get all the external walls, all the internal walls, floor joists, roof, the lot. One point of contact, one engineered solution from DPC to roof level. You're not having to go around different supply chains to try and pull the whole thing together and project manage, pull in all the bits together. It's all from one source. So we've talked about getting very good insulation in the panels, um, but also these days we're talking about air tightness. So you can see the membrane we've got around the uh, floor zone here. That membrane is a breathable membrane. Again, how can you have a breathable airtight membrane? Very much like a pair of Gore-Tex coats. So the idea is it breathes through and cha changes depending on the uh, temperature and moisture levels. So that membrane is sitting over the external walls. Then we turn around and actually sit our floor joists straight on top of that. Over the years now, we've gone from solid floor joists, sort of 9 by 2 solid timber floor joists. Now, pretty much 99% of the floors are what we call an engineered floor joist. So as you'll see in front of us now, we've got what we call a metal web floor joist. So it's a timber top, timber bottom, and metal struts. And the idea being then is you can run all your soil pipes, all your mechanical ventilation, and all your services straight through the floors. So as we said earlier, you've got service battens on the walls, You've then got services in the floor as well. Whereas traditionally, the floor joists used to fully bear on the outside walls, now they're top hung. 
So it's only the top cord. So the bottom cord isn't actually sat on anything. That's literally picking up plasterboard and the stiffness of the joist, which means then that your external wall panels can come right up underneath the underside of the joist and obviously give you a better engineered solution from a thermal point of view, so you've got no cold transfer coming in through the external walls. Those minimum depths are 254 millimetres, which then will account for soil pipes, mechanical ventilation, everything going through. But again, the, the, the deeper, we can then make those joists deeper depending on the spans. And obviously these days with more open plan living, um, we're, we're actually having a lot bigger spans now, so we can introduce any steel beams and things like that to actually break those spans down and then obviously turn around and increase the depth of those joists up to 254, up to 302, uh, 354, or whatever uh, depth is required to try and maintain a 400 or 600 mil rack on the floor. Then we'll turn around and actually uh, be ready now to start decking the floor. Obviously, um, the, uh, floor, the floor today now, we, normally we would glue that floor down and we would turn around and actually nail that floor down with ring shank nails. But obviously if I do that, we won't take it apart afterwards. So we shall dry fix the floor. The floor these days now as a standard is 22 mil chipboard. Um, and the chipboard has actually got what we call a peel clean layer on the top of it as well. So the idea being that peel clean layer keeps the, um, keeps the sheet dry and also keeps the sheet clean. Because as you know, the one thing during construction with the climate we've got in the UK and the weather we've got outside today, you're never always going to be able to be building in dry conditions. So that peel clean can stay on there until the house is finished, decorated and really ready to start putting carpets down. It's at that point you'll literally run around the outside of the rooms with a Stanley knife, cut the edges and actually seal that, uh, seal that down so it actually gives you a full uh, nice clean floor so you don't have any plaster splots, splats on the floor uh, and things like that. So we deck, uh, deck that down so, and as we said 22 mil moisture resistant chipboard on them on them all. Then we turn around and bring our air tightness layer back up over as we were showing you earlier so you've got that connection from ground floor to first floor and then we'll turn around and actually put the first floor panels up. So your first floor panel goes on. Again, one of the, one of the big advantages of the timber frame is the speed of build. These days, at the end of the day, nobody wants to wait for anything. Once they've decided they want to build and once they've got planning, the planning is going to take a lot longer than normal. They want to get on and build it. They want that frame up. And pretty much you can always be, depending on the size, the size of the house, you can be pretty much looking at a, a, a day per story. They're uh, like that. They're, uh, so you'll have the, the salt plates and ground floor panels up in the day, joists and deck in the day, and then the first floor panels up in the day. So on average, as we're sort of saying, you're getting an average sort of uh, three to four bedroom house up and ready for roof in sort of seven days, which at the end of the day you're never going to do that with any kind of, uh, any other kind of build system um, there today and obviously that is key with the weather conditions and everything we've got these days. So you've got the first floor panels up, they're uh, uh, with your air tightness layer ready to turn around and uh, be sealed. Then on the inside of that, as we were talking earlier, you're, as I was showing you about the liners, our liner board goes on, and the liner board is obviously to turn around and actually um, does fit there, uh, as I made earlier. The liner board goes on, and then that's back on top to be then screwed straight to the timber frame, and then you tape the air tightness layer to the liner board on the inside, so that by the time it's taped to the DPC and DPM, you've got an air tightness layer up, up the liner through the floor, round the floor, up to the first floor. So your liner board then on the first floor, the same again. Turn around and drops in, across the face of the studs, and then your membrane tapes up so that you turn around and got that one point of uh, air tightness. As we were saying earlier, air tightness is simple, it's, it's relatively simple, and the idea being is you want to be able to follow it with a pen on the drawing 
all the way around without taking your pen off. If you have to take your pen off, that means you've got an air leakage somewhere. So that shows you how we can turn around and actually get the first the, the uh, timber frame erected up to roof level. Then people say to us, what roof can I put on a timber frame? You can put any kind of roof on there possible. And obviously today with designs and planners trying to turn around and make more use of the full floor areas and room in the roofs. So whether we have standard trusses, um, we, they're uh, going straight on top with no room in the roof, or whether we use what we call a double bobtail truss, where you've actually got like semi-vaulted, so like with dormer bungalows or townhouses when we've got sloping ceilings upstairs. And then as you can see there, we've got steel purlins in that one. We can have steel purlins or we can have glue lamp timber um, like that. Again, it's a, as long as we use an engineered purlin in there to actually carry that load from one end to the other, not a problem. Or the other, pro other uh, product you can use these days is what we call a raised tie truss which gives you a small amount of um, slope and ceiling. And then we can mix it as well. We don't have to have the same, in the same roof system throughout the house. So we can have flat ceilings in some areas, we're semi-vaulted in some areas, and we can actually have it fully vaulted in some areas, as you can see here with a, so with a uh, softwood rafter. Or if we've got a, a, you're using the TechVantage T system and you're wanting a vaulted roof and you're obviously wanting to maintain that thermal performance, then we can use metal web rafters, as the metal web floor joists as rafters, um, and then actually put a sheathing board on top of those. And again, you could tile that, you could put a metal deck on there, standing seam, whatever. Then obviously sometimes people are wanting to make attic roofs and make best use of that floor space. So the actual truss can come up with an attic space, with a, with a room in the roof truss with a space actually in it. So that gives you full options of pitched roofs. You can also then use what we call flat roof solutions. Flat roofs seem to sort of go away, but they've sort of come back now with the contemporary designs we're now using, that you're actually getting flat roofs on places now with then with sort of EDPM or GRP solutions, green roofs. Again, we can put any kind of roof on that timber frame, but the big key is we need to know early doors what that roof system is because it does affect the loadings of the timber frame. People then say, how do I clad a timber frame? You can clad a timber frame absolutely anything. Again, as long as we know what that cladding is before we start. So as we said earlier with the silver paper, so you've got the silver paper on the outside, so the breather membrane covers the timber frame completely, so there's no bare timber anywhere. And then the laps are actually stapled down. And then the blue tapes are actually showing you where the studs are behind. So then the bricklayers can know exactly where to nail their brick ties, or if it's lightweight cladding, where they need to screw the cladding battens on to then put the cladding on. Obviously then around any windows or any joinery openings with a masonry fill, we've then got a cavity closure, which is a timber cavity closure, and then a DPC going on top of that ready then for the windows to be fitted, uh, ready for the windows to be fitted in. And that DPC goes on by the brick layers to enable any, to, to reduce any damp uh, tracking out of the cavity into the window, into the window reveal. But the other question people always say, well if I'm going to build in timber frame, what can I build? Can I build just single storey dwellings? Can I only build two storey dwellings? If it could be drawn it can be built. And with timber frame, we can build it single storey, two storey, three storey. Currently in the UK, we can build up to seven storeys. We don't have many seven storey self builds. People don't realise how strong timber frame actually is. But as we said earlier, it's an engineered solution. So it can be, it's, as long as we know what the loadings and everything are, and whether we're putting underfloor heating on subsequent floors and things like that, it can be built. Right, hopefully that gives you a good uh, account of what we've gone through, guys. Thank you very much.